In today's video I'm going to be doing a Google Sites tutorial. So first when you go to sites.google.com you'll be taken to this page and at the top you'll be able to create a brand new site. You can also click on the template gallery button at the top and it will open up a list of different templates that you can choose from or you can just create a blank one and below all of this you'll see all of your google sites that you've already created so for demonstration purposes i'm going to create a brand new site and once you've created your site you'll see a page that looks like this so at the top you've got a header which will appear on all of your pages and you can change what this says per page. So if I click in this area, you'll see a blue box around the edge of it to indicate that this is an entire section. And if you put your cursor over the text, you'll see another blue box to indicate that this is a text box inside of that section. So I can select this text here and then I can change it and you'll see that now I've changed the header for this page to say test page. You can also change the background image to whatever you want as well. This is just the Google Sites default. Next, you can click on header type and you can change how big the header is. Title only will remove the background. And if you look on the right hand side, you'll see all of your controls where you can add different elements to your site. So if I click on the text box option, it'll add a text box to this page. I can then type anything in there. And you can also choose different font styles. So for example, if I wanted this to be a subheading, it'll change the font styles for me. I can also click where it says Lato, which is the default font. And I can choose a different font from this list. Some of them even have different styles, as you can see there. If I click on more fonts, it'll open up Google Fonts, where I can select different fonts that aren't already in that list. You can search through them as well. So I don't think anyone will have a problem with fonts because there's quite a few to choose from. Next to this, you've got font size. So if I select this bit of text here, I can change it to be a little bit bigger. Next, you've got bold, italics and underline, which you can also activate by pressing Ctrl, B, I or U on Windows or Command, B, I or U on Mac. Next to this, you've got the option to hyperlink some text. So if you click on that, I could set this word here, test, to go to google.com and click on apply and it will automatically make the text be blue so that you can tell that it's hyperlinked and you can see it's put the link there but you can also click on the text color option to change the color of this to whatever you want it will also underline it as well but of course you can undo that as well the next option you've got is the alignment of the text so i can choose for it to be in the middle or on the right or for it to all be lined up with the edges of the page next to the text box option you'll see an option to add an image so if you click on that and then go to upload it will bring up a file browser and then you can select the image that you want to add so in this case i'm going to do the facebook logo and then click on upload once you've selected it you can then resize the image by dragging the handles on the side you can also click on the crop button and zoom the photo in the button next to it will uncrop it once you've actually cropped it. You can hyperlink it as well. So if I wanted to make this go to my Facebook profile, I can type in my Facebook link. And now when that image is clicked, it will go to my Facebook profile. Next to that, you've got a button to remove the photo. And under the three dots menu, you've also got an option to replace the image with a different image. You can also edit the alt text. So I could type here Facebook logo. And then click apply. And that will now be the alt text for that photo. Also in this menu, you can add a caption to the image. So if I type in here, Facebook profile, and then I can center this as well. And basically what this has done is it's added a little text box below the image. And as you can see, it's now connected to the image. So I can select the image separately, or I can select the bottom text box. I can also hover my cursor over it and I can move the two together and now they're grouped so I can move that to the middle without having to do it individually. Below the images option, you've got an option to embed. So you can embed things by a URL. So if, for example, you can embed a YouTube video and it will play on your website. You've also got the option to embed code. So if you've got any HTML code that you want to embed, such as a form or part of a different web page, you can do that here. Next to the embed option, you've got an option for Google Drive. So if you click on that, it will bring up your Google Drive and list all of your files. So let's say I wanted to embed this video here. I can click on that and then click on insert and it will add that video to the web page and people can play it on your website. Below these buttons at the top, you've got an option for layouts. So if you click on one of these, it will add a layout to the page. You can see there's quite a few different ones and these are placeholders where you can add images and then text below it. If you scroll down, there's an option for collapsible text. So this is quite handy if you've got a lot of text to put onto one web page. You can use collapsible text to make it more compact. So I could add 
a bit of text to the top so I'll call this test 1 and then below it I'll put test 2 and now you'll see that it's hiding the text below it on the website until someone clicks on it and then it will show the text below it and at any point you can turn off the collapsible option and it will always show on the web page again you can resize this as well and then it will only take up this amount of room on your site so I'm going to move this to the middle and I will also center this text that I've got up here Below this you've got an option for table of contents, so if you've got a page with multiple subheadings you can click on this and it will put all of your different pages into a list. So for example on my website I've got a page about how to create a Facebook group for beginners and you can see here I've got a few subheadings and because these are actually marked as subheadings under the styles, if I go to the table of contents option you'll see that it actually puts all of these in a list. Unfortunately they're not collapsible so that might be a problem for you, but if I drag this from the top and put it below my header and then when I go to my website you'll see that it's got all of them listed here and now when anyone clicks any of these they will be automatically taken to that section you can also hide any of these from the table of contents if you don't want it there and you can change whether they are flat against the edge or if there's a bit of space before it next you've got the option for an image carousel so you can add multiple images to these carousels this is a brilliant way to show off multiple photos without having your page looking too cluttered so people can manually flick through each photo or it can do it automatically if you go to the settings icon you can change whether you can see the number of dots below the photo to indicate how many photos there are you can also add a caption to each photo and if you don't want that you can disable it you can also turn on auto start which will make the photos transition by themselves you can change the speed of that as well next you've got an option to add a button so a button has to lead to a link or a different page on your site so if i wanted a button that goes to google.com i could name the button google and then set it to go to google.com and click on insert now i'll put this in the middle you can also resize this to make it a little bit bigger you can also change whether it's filled outlined or just the text and the text option is still a button it's not just text because when you click on it you can see that it's got a little box around it and when that button is clicked it will go to google.com in this case but you can set it to go to any website you want next to the button option you can add a divider which is an easy way to separate items on your page so you can see at the moment there's these little lines between each section now these won't be viewable on the actual website these are just for you so you can tell where each section of your site is if i wanted to add a divider i can do that and i can select where i want these dividers to go i can move them around as well and now when you go to the site you can actually see that there's now lines in between each section to separate it next to this option you can add a placeholder so if you're thinking of adding a picture to your website but you've not got the picture created yet or you don't want to publish it quite yet then you can add a placeholder and this will just be a temporary holding place for when you want to add your photo you can also go to the settings icon and change what type of content you want to be in the placeholder. Below the placeholder option you can add a YouTube video which is an easier way to embed it. So you could type in a YouTube video and it will add that to your website. So if I go to uploaded it will show the videos that are on my channel. So in this case I'm going to add my video about connecting a Google site to a Google Analytics property and click on select and it will add that video to the website. I can then move it into the middle and then crop it down so that it's not getting black borders at the top and bottom. Then when you go to your website you'll see that i can click on the play button and it will play directly on the website you can also share it from here as well if you click on the video you've got the option to open it up in a new tab to make sure that it's the correct video you can also go into settings and you can change how the progress bar looks you can change whether it slides out of view or if it fades you can change the color of the progress bar to either red or white and you can also disable or enable the ability to use full screen you can also add a Google Calendar. If I wanted to add my own calendar, I can insert that. And you can see this isn't a very good example because I've not got much on it, but it will show events that are on that calendar. You can also add a map to a certain place. So I'm currently in the UK. So if I just type in UK and click on that, I can then either add a map or a satellite view. So in this case, I'm going to add the satellite view and click on select. And you can see that now I've got a map on the website and people can zoom in. They can look around it, can even expand it. So that's good if you've got a business somewhere that you want to show your customers where you're located. If you use Google Docs, Slides or Sheets, then you can embed either one of those onto your website. So I don't use these very much, but if I wanted to add this document here, I can click on that and it will add that to the site and people can read it and look at it directly on the website. You can also create a form using Google Forms. So if you wanted to add a contact form or a feedback form, then you can definitely do that. So if I wanted to embed a form where people can give feedback about the website, 
out I can select it and then insert it and you'll see that now people can type inside of these boxes and provide feedback and the last option is to add a chart so if you've got any charts then you can embed those onto your site as well if you hover your cursor over any section you've also got the option to drag that entire section around you can also go to the section background and change it so standard will just be white and then these two will be dependent of the theme that you've chosen. You can also upload an image to be the background of that section. You can duplicate a section to create a copy of it and put it directly below it. And you can also delete the section. The next tab at the top is pages where you can create different pages for your site. You can double click the text and change the name of that page. This is what will appear in the tab at the top. When you click on the three dots, you can duplicate the page to create a copy of it and then you can give it a name and a custom path if you want otherwise it will just be the default path which is usually the name of the page all lowercase with the dashes in between if i click on done it will create another copy of that page and keep everything as it was you can also click on the three dots to delete a page in this menu there's an option to set a page that isn't currently a home page to be your home page you can go to properties and this is the same menu that i just showed you where you can change the name on the path you can also add a sub page so I'm going to call this one test. So the way this works is when you're visiting this page, the path will be added on to the original one. So you can have multiple slashes inside of one URL. You can also hide a page from navigation. So if you only want it to be available via the URL or through search, then you can do that as well. And speaking of search, if you've got more than one page visible on the site, you will also have a search icon at the top right, which doesn't show up in the editor and people can search through pages on your website. If you go to the bottom, you can create a new page. You can also create a new link. So if I wanted to create a link to go to YouTube, I can call it YouTube and make it go to youtube.com and I can choose whether I want it to open in a new tab or not and then click on done and now I've got a link in the navigation bar to go to youtube.com and the last tab you've got themes which are supposed to be getting a massive overhaul soon where you'll be able to customize the style of every part of your website but for now this is what we've got so I prefer the simple theme and you can change the color of it and it will change the theme of different sections of your site you can also choose a custom color and you can also change the default font style. There's many different ones that you can choose from with different styles. So that's everything covered in the right panel of Google Sites. Now we're going to look at the top. So here you've got the name of your website. Now only you will be able to see this name. This is just so you know what it's called when you're looking through it. Below this, you've got an option to add a site name, which is what will appear in the tab at the top of the screen. So I'm just going to call both of these test for now. There we go. And below this, you've got an option to add a logo, which will appear just to the left of the name of your site. A PNG will look best for this. Next to this, you've got an option to edit the navigation bar settings, which is also in the settings for the entire site, which I'm going to get to in a moment. Up here, it says that all of your changes are saved in Google Drive, so you can make as many changes as you like, and you can always roll back to any version of the website. And this doesn't count towards your Google Drive quota, so you can store quite a few photos on your site, and it won't take up any space on your Google Drive. There's two ways to view the version history of your site you can either click here where it says all changes saved in drive or you can click on the three dots and go to version history so there won't be much to see at the moment but at any point i can restore to any version of my site and then click on restore and it will bring that version back so you can see this is what we started with and this is where we are now you can click on the three dots and give it a name or make a copy you've also got the option to undo the last action and redo the last action which is the same as Control and z or Control and y or command if you're on a mac next to this you've got the option to preview your website without having to publish it so if you're wanting to see what it looks like you can definitely do that before you publish it so at the moment we're looking at what it'll look like on a computer you can also switch to a tablet and a mobile phone and you can also leave feedback about this viewer if there's something wrong with it that you don't like next to this you can copy the link for the published site but at the moment i haven't published it so i can't show you this but it just gives you a link to the site so that you can share it with other people you've also got the option to share this website with other people so for example i could share it with someone and give them access to actually edit the site and publish changes next to this you've got the option for site settings for the navigation bar you can change whether you want it to be at the top of your site or down the left so as you can see if i go to preview the site you'll see that it shows up down the left now and if the screen's too small it will show a menu icon to actually open the menu and on mobile it will always show this menu regardless it will never be at the top on mobile so i'm going to change that back to top in this menu you've also got an option to change the navigation bar from transparent to white 
or black. In the tabs down the side, you've also got an option for brand images. So you can upload a site logo, which is the same as doing it from in the top left here by clicking add logo. You can also upload a favicon, which is what appears in the tab at the top. So for my website, there's a little R logo, which is just an image that I uploaded. Under viewer tools, you've got the option for the info icon, which will appear in the bottom left of every Google site. So you can't disable the info icon. You can see there's no option next to it to turn it off, but there is an option to disable the page last updated time. So if I go to the website, you can see in the bottom left corner, it will show a little I and it shows me when the page was last updated. You can disable this section here, but viewers will always have the option to either go to the Google Sites editor to create a site themselves, or to report your website if you're abusing the Google site terms. The next option is for anchor links, which are fairly useful. So if you've got this option enabled, people will be able to put their cursor over a heading or subheading, and the button will appear next to it, which lets them copy the link to this section. So when that link is visited, it will automatically scroll down to that part of the site, but I can't show you that because of not published this website yet as it is just for demonstration purposes under the custom domain section this is where you can link your website to a custom domain so this involves you to change the dns records next you've got site analytics which will allow you to go to analytics.google.com and view all the insights for your website next you've got the option for announcement banner so i can turn on the banner and then change the color so in this case i'm going to set it as this red color you can then add a message to the banner and then a link if you want to so you can choose what the button for the link will say on what the link will actually be and whether you want it to open in a new tab you can then change the visibility of it so if i set it to be on all pages and then close this you'll see that it puts it at the top of that page so everyone will see it first thing when they visit the site and when you go to publish the website you can choose a web address which will automatically be sites.google.com slash view slash and then whatever you put here but like i said you, you can use a custom domain if you want to of course you can modify the sharing settings here which is the same as what we went to in this icon here where we can change who has access to the site you can also choose whether you want search engines such as Google or Bing to display your website and at this point you are ready to publish your website. So this has been a full tutorial of Google Sites. If you've got any questions please leave them in the comments. I also recommend that you check out Steagle.com. Their articles should be able to help you with any questions you've got. Also please check out the Google Sites group on Facebook. There will be a link in the description as well. And thank you very much for watching.